What's up, my name is Jam, and welcome to another Bishoujo action figure review. Well, I finally got my Figma Plastic Angels and figure, so let's take a closer look at her today. This won't be a full review, since she shares a lot with Lana, whom I've already reviewed, so be sure to check out that review by clicking the link on screen or in the description. Like Lana, and released back in May of 2022 and retailed for 10,800 yen, or around 90 to 100 US dollars. Ange's box is the larger sized Figma box due to her large accessories. I really love how Ange's and Lana's boxes look when put together. The pink of Ange's box and the teal of Lana's box work well when paired, matching their similarly colored jackets. The sides of the boxes display nicely, and you can have the photos appear to be giving each other a high five or working together at their desks. Opening the box, the figure and accessories are packed into two layers of plastic trays, with the extra hand, stand, and Figma baggie taped under the bottom tray. Strangely, my figure is missing its instructions, which I'm assuming is not common. Ange is arguably the main character in Shunya Yamashita's Plastic Angels column in the Japanese model kit magazine, Armor Modeling. This figure is based on her appearance on the cover of the first Plastic Angels art book, where her and Lana are wearing practically the same outfit. Figure manufacturers love to save money by reusing the same molds as often as possible, since they are the most expensive aspect of figure making. So the fact that Ange and Lana often wear matching outfits was an opportunity Goodsmile just couldn't pass up, and they chose these outfits. I can sort of see why. The other times they are matching, it's usually a military type outfit or a school uniform, and they look like outfits any character can wear. Whereas these outfits feel more unique and are a good combination of sexy and utilitarian. But seeing all the outfits these characters have worn, I can't help but wish that they each had their own unique outfit because there are some really cool outfits that could have been chosen. So yes, Ange and Lana share the exact same bodies here, but at least Good Smile did a good job sculpting them. As I said in Lana's review, there's some great details, like the straps integrated throughout her outfit and the way her thighs spill over the tops of her stockings. The jacket has an appropriately puffy look to it, with a good amount of wrinkles. I do wish the jacket body was made of a softer plastic, but unfortunately it's pretty stiff, so it constricts the articulation and posability of this figure when it's on. So let's get to the main difference between Ange and Lana. Her head. I honestly wasn't expecting to be as impressed as I was by her head sculpt, but I have to say that I really like all the detail and texture they captured in her hair. The added strands at the top and side of her head really add to the complexity of her hair and give it some added realism. There is a bit of that typical Figma softness where the ends of the hair don't seem as sharp as they could be, but I feel like it's not as bad as on some other Figmas. Ange also wears what I believe to be a pair of British World War II RAF Mark VIII goggles on her head, and they are not removable. They do look good and are sculpted well and match the source material, but I really wish they included an alternate head without the goggles, since she doesn't always wear goggles in the illustrations. Ange comes with a total of three face plates, smiling, worried, and smiling with closed eyes. Each one captures that signature Shunya Yamashita style and are a good reflection of Ange's personality, which is described as bright and open. I rather like the worried expression though, and it's a good match to how Shunya Yamashita draws Ange in a lot of illustrations, including the art these figures are based on. The front of the hair is removable, in typical Figma fashion, to facilitate the changing of faceplates. Articulation is, of course, the same as Lana, with the exception that Lana has a joint for her ponytail, and Ange does not. And just as with Lana, the articulation is restricted when the jacket parts are on, mostly at the elbows, wrists, torso, and hips. Take off the jacket and the figure is much less restricted and a wider variety of poses are available. Her legs cannot be pulled downward like some Figmas, which is slightly disappointing since her belt does restrict the range of motion for the legs. Besides Ange's head, her accessories help differentiate her from Lana. Perhaps the most important accessory is her pug, named Mog, or Mogu, as pronounced in Japanese. He is a constant companion to the girls and adds that extra bit of cuteness to each illustration. 
This figure of Mog is in a standard sitting position, and his head is on a ball joint, so it can swivel and tilt. Just like how Lana came with an oversized pair of nippers, Ange comes with an oversized airbrush. The girls are often drawn holding airbrushes like this, as if they were bazookas, so it's a no-brainer to include one. The airbrush has a handle on it so Ange can hold it like a weapon, and there is a movable trigger. The detailing at both ends of the airbrush look pretty nice, and it might be based on the illustration called I Am Ready, which depicts a pretty basic airbrush design. But I also think it would have been cool if a more complex airbrush design were used, as seen in some of the other Plastic Angels illustrations. A hose coming out of the bottom of the handle would have been cool too, and it could have been connected to this amazing air compressor backpack from the illustration No Need to Modify. I understand that they probably chose not to do that since it would have been more complicated, especially having to deal with backpack straps and stuff, but still, it would have made the figure so much more unique. Ange also comes with some appropriately scaled modeling tools in the form of a hobby knife and paintbrush. These are very tiny, but also very nicely detailed, and I especially like how sharp the hobby knife looks. I was a bit surprised to see that these were not attached to a hand since they are so small, but they probably kept them separate so you can lay them on the included table when Ange isn't using them. The only bad thing is that they can be a little fiddly to get into her hands. This leads us to her various extra hands, some of which are exclusive to her, such as the two hands for holding the hobby knife and paintbrush. Neither hand works really well with the accessories, but overall they work better with the hobby knife, since it's thicker. The knife doesn't snap into the hand or anything, but there's just enough tension to keep it there. However, the same can't be said about the paintbrush. You just kind of have to rest it in her hands as best you can, and it's really just held in by gravity. On the tighter gripping hand, you can try to wedge it between her thumb and finger, but that can be difficult. Ange also comes with hands specifically for holding the giant airbrush, a right hand for holding the grip with a trigger finger, and a left hand with a wide grip for holding the body of the airbrush. The wide grip is also useful for cradling real-world objects like pencils and paintbrushes, but it's not quite tight enough to actually hold it with a tight grip. Besides those unique hands, you get the typical closed hands, open hands, and gripping hands. And of course you get the same table and chair that comes with Lana. However, I've come to question if the table and chair should have been included in the first place. Sure, it makes sense with the model kit theme, but the girls are very rarely seen sitting at a table. When they are working on a model kit, they are usually sitting on the floor at even smaller tables, or there's no table at all. Maybe they should have just included the table and chair with one of the figures, and then the other figure came with more giant-sized tools, or a small vehicle like a moped or mini motorcycle. It's kind of cool to have them both sitting at their tables working on models, but at the same time there's so much that is repeated between the two figures that more variation would have been nice. For instance, they could have at least included a unique chair for both figures, or painted them in different colors. And paint could have easily been a way to differentiate the two girls without the need for new tooling. As I mentioned in the Lana review, there is a slight difference in the color of their bikini top, so that could have been a simple and easy way to make each body look a little more unique. Other than those nitpicks, I do think the paint job is rather clean, with crisp black and white stripes on her jacket, and overall a pretty clean job on the very thin pink lines on her straps. However, I do wish they painted the zipper teeth silver, as it looks a little unfinished in black. Ange's hair looks great and matches up well with the source material, though I do wish there were a bit more red to help it transition to pink a little better. Her goggles look good as well, with all the silver bits properly colored, though I do wish the lenses were shinier to give it a glass-like appearance. Overall, it's a pretty typical Figma paint job, which is to say that it's clean, but doesn't have the extra shading and highlighting paint applications that you'd find on a static anime figure. I never talked about how well Lana works with other figures, so let's do that now since we have Ange. Ange and Lana measure about 5.5 inches or 14 centimeters, and they fit in pretty well with most Figmas. And here they are with a variety of Figmas from my collection. Here they are with SH Figuarts Chun-Li, Mayfex Spider-Gwen, 
Sosai Shoujo Tein Madoka, and Storm Collectibles Tyrus Flare. Ange and Lana have pretty much worn a new outfit with every illustration, which makes the standardized Figma joints a huge bonus, since you can easily do head swaps and kit bashing with other Figmas to create new looks for the girls. Since there is a heavy military theme to the Plastic Angels, military-styled Figmas such as those from the Little Armory theme can work pretty well. Figmas in sexy outfits work well too, such as swimsuit Chiaki, and this particular body can also be used with the Plastic Angels jacket parts. In fact, any Figma body should work with the jacket parts as long as the body is thin enough and the peg hole is at the upper back and not the lower back so the body of the jacket can plug in properly. Ange and Lana are supposedly high school girls, and they are often depicted in Japanese school uniforms, so Figma's wearing such outfits like sailor outfit Emily can also be a good fit. What other outfits would they look good in? Let me know in the comments what Figma bodies you'd use with Ange and Lana. So in the end, even though I already had Lana, I still like Ange, but it's hard to escape the feeling that I bought the same figure twice, which is true to a certain extent. So I really wish Good Smile could have varied the paint jobs a bit at the very least to help differentiate the two, or given them completely different accessories instead of repeating the chair and table. Ange's head sculpt is really good looking and I love how detailed and colorful her hair is, though I do wish she came with an alternate head without goggles. The giant airbrush is also a highlight of the set, and it's these types of accessories that really help make the Plastic Angels unique, so I kind of wish they went a little further and included more model kit accessories, or even a mini model kit for Ange to work on. So while I like Ange and Lana and how they make a pretty cool pair of figures, it's also kind of disappointing if you are familiar with their illustrations because there's so many directions they could have gone in, so many things that could have been included, and so many outfits that could have been explored. So ultimately, I can't recommend buying both figures unless you really like them as a pair. If you just like the way they look, or are into model kits, then maybe just buy the figure that fits your tastes, and then decide if you want the other figure after that. If you are interested in buying one or both, check the links in my description for where to buy. One last thing, I finally found the right download page to download the Papercraft model kit boxes and cutting mats shown in the official product photos. Check the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. I have been looking for these for a while and I finally realized my error. I was looking at the English download page when I should have been looking at the Japanese download page. So I was annoyed but also glad to finally have these, and it looks like Good Smile did actually make good on their promise to make these available once the figures were released. There are two sets of five Playmax Military Cuties model kit boxes and two sets of three different cutting mats. Just print out the PDF, cut them out, glue the boxes, and you've got some extra accessories for your figures. Check out my short video for some helpful tips on making the boxes. So that wraps up another review. I really thought this would be a quicker review, but it turned out to be longer than Lana's review, I think. Check out her review on the screen or in the description. Thanks for making it this far. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know if you own these figures and what accessories you would have liked to see come with them. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next review. Jam out.